Okay, so I guess we can get started. We have, uh, looks like a pretty good group. So um, I would like to say first, uh, welcome to everyone. My name is Samantha and I am one of the teen librarians here at the Levittown Public Library. Um, I just wanted to go over a co quick couple housekeeping things. Uh, first, I want to keep everybody muted um, during the presentation. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, anything at all that you'd like to say, uh, you could put it in the chat box. I'll be monitoring the chat um, and I can uh, interrupt our presenters if needed. Um, or you can always raise your hand uh, and I can see that as well. Uh, we'll also have some time at the end for some questions and answers. If you want to wait till then, that's perfectly fine as well. Um, I will be recording this presentation, so if you want to check back um, or want to review something, you can always check our website. Um, it will, should be posted in a couple of days, so just something to keep in mind. Um, on that note, uh, I would like to say welcome to uh, Ryan and Robert from Farmingdale State, and they're going to talk to us all about the SUNY's admission process, so uh, I leave it up to you. Thank you very much for having us. Um, I guess we'll introduce ourselves really quick, Rob. Um, I'm Ryan Neary. I'm the Assistant Director of Admissions at Farmingdale State College. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Rob Cremens. I'm an admissions advisor here at Farmingdale State College as well. So um, I'm going to be the one sharing the screen. Um, Rob and I will bounce a lot of things off of each other throughout the presentation. Feel free to throw things in the chat. We can answer them live. We can do a Q&A at the end. We'll make this as you know, interactive as, uh, as you want it to be. Um, one of the things <clears throat> before I share, we're going to be going over a lot of material tonight. So it's good that it's recorded. Um, there are no, you know, weird or, or dumb questions. So if you have them, you know, we're the professionals. So ask, ask away. All right. So let me share my screen. And if you want to use the chat function or test it out, just say hi, hello, or something that you're interested in or, or anything like that, just to make sure that it is working so we can get to your questions later on in the presentation. Exactly. I'm going to go blind. So uh, Rob, just confirm you can see the screen okay, yeah? Yep, all set. Perfect. All right. So, you know, one of the benefits of SUNY is you have, um, you know, or the State University of New York is you have 64 individual campuses that are throughout New York State, ranging from down here on Long Island, you know, the southern area of New York State, all the way up to the Buffalo area, the Canton areas, which are, you know, a stone's throw away from Canada. So you have the ability of staying close to home, as well as having that experience, that independence of going away to school as well. And I know COVID has changed a lot of things and we're gonna talk a lot about that as well and how that's changing the, uh, the landscape, you know, of higher education. You know, throughout SUNY with the 64 campuses, 4,300 undergraduate programs. So what we typically say is, if you want it, we got it. You know, there's, there's just a, a tons and tons of tons of options throughout SUNY. So, and there's also good transfer paths. So if you start at a community college, let's say, there are um, so many options that open up for you being a SUNY community college graduate as well. Um, tons of internships and co-ops. So the purpose of going to college is, is what? To, to get your career in order, get an area that you're focused in, and ultimately get a, you know, a career path and a job opportunity. So we take internships and co-ops um, you know, co very, very seriously. We're going to talk about study abroad a little bit later. It's fantastic. You know, you can do lots of things within SUNY with study abroad. Research, you know, nationally recognized, we are one of the top three largest state university systems in the country. Um, you know, we'll go over costs and attendance in a little bit as well. We have very good graduation rates. And one of the b biggest things, because, you know, college is a big business, um, we have exceptionally lower student debt um, based off of New York State residency. So what we'll go into now is um, the campus types. There are four campus types within the SUNY system. Um, you'll see them labeled here, the university centers, the university colleges, the tech colleges, which is what Farmingdale is labeled as, and the community colleges. I'm gonna go over the first two. Rob will go over the second two, just so you have a little diversity in terms of you know, voiceovers. Um, so with the university centers and doctoral degree granting institutions, these are our big four. I like to call them our big four. Um, you know, these range from a small little area upstate like uh, ceramics or uh, ESF that has a thousand students, 
to well over 20,000. You know, the closest one to us is Stony Brook, has a little over 19,000. These are all research institutions, um, honors programs, and the, the, um, the university centers are all D1 athletics. So you can see a small little map of where all of our university centers and doctoral degree granting institutions are. So I'm not gonna go through all of them, I'll just kind of skip around, but you can see that no matter where you are in New York State, there's options for you. The university colleges, um, you know, we like to promote the small city and towns. These are typically the institutions that have both bachelor's and master's degrees. Um, you know, typically three to 9,000 students. Um, again, undergraduate honors programs and the rest of these colleges will be mostly division three athletics. And these are our university colleges. Going back, the one that's highlighted right now, Empire State, is 100% online. Um, <laughs> you'll, we'll go into a lot more you know, with COVID and how uh, uh, SUNY is handling it, as well as Farmingdale State. And Rob, I am going to hand it off to you, my friend. Thank you, Ryan. All right, like so Ryan said before, to, under the technology colleges, and we'll do this presentation, and then we'll do the community colleges next, Farmingdale State Colleges uh, falls under the technology technology colleges and funny enough we are actually the largest technology college within the SUNY system. So these institutions range between about 1600 students to about like it says about 9500 here at Farmingdale actually we just passed about 10,000 students so we're continuing to grow you know as we're going to talk about ourselves a little bit later on in the presentation um, but these institutions offer those large campus fields are a little bit of a smaller on that 1600 side, but that hands on with the technology and that component, like Ryan mentioned before, internships, hand on, hand on, hand on education, one on one working in that, you know, field or in that setting of, you know, whatever the major may be. Um, we have certificates, associate's degrees, bachelor's degrees. We have masters at, uh, that is held at Maritime, SUNY Maritime. Most of these schools are NCAA division three. Uh, you know, some may vary. Uh, what I will mention before, and we'll, we'll talk about later, if you are interested, thanks Ryan, we'll move through um, all the different technology college options before we move on to community college. If there is something or another school that you're interested in besides Farmingdale, because we have a lot of information obviously about our campus, you can always request a SUNY Viewbook. Simply just go to their website, the SUNY website, and I, I believe you can give them an email or a mailing. They probably have a virtual copy by now, you know, in the world that we're living in. Um, but you can get a hard uh, SUNY Viewbook mailed to yourself or your counselor may have it if you are attending school right now um, and it is a great uh, hand I know me and myself and Ryan we use it all the time it's a great little um, book about the SUNY system in general all right let's talk community colleges so in our community colleges in SUNY like Ryan said before we do have great options for our transfer population starting off in a community college and then transitioning to that bachelor's degree of your choosing so we have about six uh, excuse me about 30 campuses total about 600 to about 13,000 full-time students depending on the campus and again certificate-based programs or an associates based program you know either e equaling that immediate employment for you depending on what that certificate is or a transfer option for those students doing an associate's degree. I myself is, are, am a student of the SUNY system with my associate's degree from Nassau, and then I transferred to Farmingdale. So I am an example of this process that it was seamless. They took a majority of my credits, basically all of them, and it was a very easy, seamless process to be able to do that two and two years combined. Um, there's full-time options, part-time options. They really are able to work with those students, um, you know, or those non-traditional students as well. Um, there's commuter options and there's also resident options depending on the campuses. So you'd have to look at, uh, um, look into that. And a lot of community colleges are seen as like an open enrollment or accept anybody. It may be the case for some, but it, just like we're going to say with most of these questions or when we talk to you, it's always best to contact that institution and speak to somebody directly. Ryan, you can move on and just show the uh, community colleges if you don't mind. Sure. Um, but it is always best just to contact them just because if you're looking to do a nursing program at a community college, that's gonna have a very different criteria than a general liberal arts style program at, at a community college. So whereas it may be open enrollment under you know, liberal arts side or a general education studies based program, some of those, you know, um, we have great dental hygiene programs in the associates degree here at Farmingdale and at Suffolk. Um, so, I mean, is it Suffolk, Ryan? Excuse me? Yes, uh, uh, what for dental hygiene? Dental hygiene, it's actually us for associates, 
Um, Suffolk is toying around with the idea of starting a dental hygiene program. They have not been approved yet. yet. So like, you know, there's different criteria for every program. So just check it out. That's basically what I was saying about the open enrollment uh, portion of it. The one thing I will touch on um, before we go into the general education requirements, you know, Rob brings up a great point is the transferability of credits. Um, SUNY has what they call a SUNY guarantee, which, which basically means that if you go to a community college within SUNY and graduate with your associate's degree, you're going to be guaranteed acceptance into one of the four-year institutions. Will it obviously be, you know, a top choice um, uh, depending on your GPA? Maybe. Um, but if it doesn't work out at the choice of your institution, we will guarantee you acceptance into at least one of the other four years. So it's a guaranteed, you know, joint admission program. Not to step on your toes, Ryan, but also another thing that comes with that, like you don't need to pay for a secondary application. If you graduate, you're able to indicate under payment that you are getting an associate's degree, completing it or hold it. Um, and then that will also, I don't want to say waive the $50 application fee, but it's basically one application for your two-year degree and then moving on to your bachelor's degree. So there's a lot of nice perks that SUNY does offer to its students. And sometimes you do need to do a little bit of digging, but we're here to answer any of those questions for you today. Yeah, absolutely. Um, kind of jumping into the general education requirements. So any bachelor's degree and associate's degree are going to require what we call gen eds. That's what we call them in admissions for short, but general education classes. These are basically liberal arts classes that are transferable not only to most, if not all degrees, um, but they're also transferred to other institutions, especially like if we're, we keep talking about the community colleges. Um, if you kind of undecided and not sure what you want to do, a lot of students go into an undeclared or a liberal arts program. That way, the, the credits from that institution can move with them into either a bachelor's degree there or into another institution. Um, so what the gen ed classes really tend to do is get you ready for the job market. It also helps you figure out ultimately what you want to do. You know, statistics show that if freshmen declare a major, over 70% of freshmen that declare a major are going to change it at some point. So, you know, having this kind of, you know, test the waters, kind of dip your feet into specific types of classes, it works really well with kind of fine tuning and figuring out what the students really want to do. So with the process, um, you know, Rob touched on it a little bit. Every, our application fee for SUNY is $50. Um, most colleges will accept um, mo every four year in university and university center is gonna accept the SUNY application. Some of the community colleges will, some of them will have their own private application, um, but just note it is all 50. It's gonna take some research, just like you'll hear re Rob and I say over and over again, um, but it's $50 per campus. Um, we also accept the common application as well. Um, the supplemental application is an optional um, portion of the SUNY or common application for us. Um, that is typically your activity sheet, your letters of recommendation, and your um, personal statement or essay. That is going to change because of COVID. Um, whereas we didn't really want to, we didn't really need to see a lot of that because we were numbers based. We're, we're going to want to see more and more of that. And that's going to be spread out throughout SUNY. Um, you know, your academic records, your transcripts, we're going to need that no matter what. Um, supporting documentation is really part of that supplemental. And again, like we said before, you check with each specific campus to go over deadlines if they're specialty programs. You want to jump on this, Rob? Yeah, absolutely. So some application tips, and like Ryan was saying before, you want to do a little bit of research first. Um, the SUNY system is great. They have a great search engine going on right now that you can enter in a keyword. You can type in the word law, and they're going to give you all the schools that have criminal justice programs, law programs, everything that's going to fit that criteria. You know, we're going to jump around with majors, too. We want to try to hit everybody. Um, maybe you're thinking of a medical-based program. You know, here at Farmingdale, we call it bioscience, but some other school might call it something else. So that's why they're just saying, do your 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 discovery first, do your research first, just because you don't wanna, don't wanna to apply to a school that might not have that major that you're looking for and it's kind of a waste of time and, and you know, ultimately a lot of people would be upset about that money. Um, applications are, are available now. We opened as of August 1st. So anybody that's a senior right now in high school, uh, applications are open for you to apply. Any of our juniors, it's good to take notes or sophomores or freshmen. Um, it's good to just kind of take notes of just kind of see how the application process is working, even though you're junior or sophomore, just to kind of see what that timeline and how tight it is for some of these majors. Um, 
you know, it, uh, you know, some of this is just general SUNY stuff. We don't always go over it, so I'm, you know, it's, it's different for us. Uh, so submitting the application that works best for you. So that's going back to that SUNY or that common application. Most freshmen will fill out a common application. That is the trend we see. We have no bias. I'm going to be honest with you. Me and Ryan can do digging and see, okay, what did Rob, obviously that's me, fill out. But when we're reviewing for students, we're looking at these personal statements, letters of recommendations. Like Ryan said, those transcripts, we're not seeing whether you filled out an application through SUNY or Common App. There's no bias or care for that. It's whatever works best for you and what you feel is, uh, you know, works when applying. Um, Applica start your applications uh, essays early. Some of our students do them in school, which is excellent. Um, and I'd also reach out to those people that are doing letters of recommendation and some other, you know, avenues and kind of start to explore those now. Apply by December 1. Um, you know, I, I used to joke around January 1 be done. Now, actually, we're kind of pushing that to a Thanksgiving timeline right now. Um, Thanksgiving break is usually a really good timeline for most students or de or the December holiday breaks is also also good. I just put it out there for any of our students, at least for farming though, we deal with a lot of students interested in dental hygiene, nursing, applied psychology, um, a professional pilot program, and those programs are closed by January 15th. So December 1 is great, but for some of our students, it's even better to be done by Thanksgiving. Okay, Ryan, thank you. Rob okay, Robert, oh, I'm sorry. Hi. I'm yeah. sorry, we just had one question in the chat. Um, they were just asking, how is the application process going to change when reviewing the community service hours slash extracurricular involvement and things like that? Great, I, that's perfect. Actually, that transitions to my slide right here. Right. Um, and so I'll just kind of jump to the bottom. Um, now what we're dealing with, with COVID, unfortunately, um, our chancellor did announce that uh, all the SUNY campuses will be going SAT optional. What me and Ryan will be communicating through this presentation always is that you want to double check with your campus. If you're applying to Farmingdale and Farmingdale is your choice, I can speak confidently and knowing as an admissions counselor, I will not be looking at an SAT or an ACT this coming year for any of our programs from nursing to liberal arts to any to bioscience to anything. Um, so especially now, letters of recommendation, personal statements, community hours, resume, we're really advising those students that those recommended documents would really be, you know, or optional in the past would really be advised and should be submitted just to balance out those numbers that we see in the transcript. Um, yeah, it just kind of goes over, you know, what we kind of look over with the high school transcript. You could see that there. I don't think we need to go too crazy in it, into it because this is now a completely different picture of what we see. Regents is, uh, you know, some of them didn't happen last year. SAT results we're not going to have. So this is a good picture, but it is going to change. You can go to the next one, Ryan. All right. So I'll, I'll kind of take over for some of the tuition. Um, you know, the one thing that you'll see about tuition is if you're a New York State resident, um, you know, we're doing all right. Um, we are affordable, um, you know, and you'll see in the next couple slides that over 70% of the SUNY population is on federal aid as well. So they're getting support from, you know, local state and, you know, federal government um, to help offset these with whether it's scholarship um, or grant money, which is Pell or TAP, that's the good money. That's the one that you don't have to pay back. Um, and also, you know, unsubs unsubsidized loans where you can get a loan if needed at a very, very small rate. But, um, you know, really when it's all said and done, if you're going to commute to campus um, one of the four years, you're, you're paying a little over, uh, you know, $8,700 a year. Um, and that's, you know, you know, split into half into two semesters, fall and spring. Room and board is typically blanket across the campus, you'll see in the next on our slides that we're actually a little bit cheaper than this. Um, and then what we what we like to show you is typically what your expenses would be for books and supplies and personal or gas and transportation, you know, kind of that. So when it's all said and done, when you're doing your research over, over whether it's a private institution or a SUNY institution, you will see that there is a significant difference of being part of the state university system um, and being a New York State resident. Um, and I also put off to the side the community colleges. That is basically their tuition, including the fees. So whereas you look at a four-year institution at about 87 or 8810, a community college is 5800 per year. 
So again, 75% receive assistance, it's need-based. So you're gonna fill out, and I'm not gonna go into a, a FAFSA demonstration. I am, you don't want me in charge of your finances, trust me. Um, this is really, um, you'll fill out a FAFSA, which is your free um, financial aid assistance form. Um, if your son or daughter is going to be a senior this year, um, you should probably start researching this now. Um, you wanna submit this as soon as possible. Um, note that the, depending on the school that you're applying to, every single one of them is gonna have a financial aid department and they will 100% help you throughout this. Um, speaking for Farmingdale, we are going to be holding you know, financial aid assistance webinars you know, via our website and our communication uh, system. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about our virtual events and what SUNY and what not only SUNY is doing, but we're doing as well. Um, scholarships. Most, if not all, campuses offer some side, uh, some type of scholarship ranging from 100 bucks to full tuition. Um, it obviously varies. And then there is the Excelsior Scholarship um, that is uh, that came about about three to four years ago. And if your household income is lower than a set amount, um, I'm not 100% off, off the top of my head what it was. I believe it was 125. Um, you, there is a possibility that you could qualify for the Excelsior Scholarship that would offset your tuition and fees for the four year allotment. Um, just note that with the if you do qualify and receive the Excelsior Scholarship, when you graduate, you must remain and work, work and live in the state for the amount of years that you receive the scholarship, otherwise it turns into a loan, okay? So that, that is kind of like the, the application in SUNY in general. Um, what Rob and I are gonna do now is kind of dive into the admissions aspect of it and what we're gonna be looking at and how we're gonna be reviewing and you know, kind of trends going off of COVID. Um, you know, so I'll start off with, you know, why, you know, we just spoke about it, you know, with 64 college campuses, lots of opportunities, diversity, the facilities, great value. And, you know, you're going to be connected not only to the institution that you are accepted into within SUNY, but all of the other 63 other campuses as well. So, you know, the options, as much as you want to use it, are endless, you know, within the state university system. So you want to take over, Rob? Yeah, sure, absolutely. Cool. Um, just to go back to one of Ryan's points, though, before we move on with the Excelsior Scholarship, I know Ryan and I, you know, we we mentioned it, but you should contact financial aid. One thing good about the Excelsior Scholarship, if you go to their main landing page, they do have an email fill out, so you could basically put your email in, and it basically puts you in a system that once the application is available, they send you an automatic email. Ourselves as counselors, we put our emails in there, so we know when it comes out. It comes out much later in the year, towards April. So you know, just note that. So what are, you know, what are you kind of looking for? What is an admissions office uh, looking for? Or what do we do when we review or how is it a good fit for you? Um, that's, you know, always a question for you. What I always say to a student is that the best thing to do is have general, a lot of different acceptances or general admissions packets in front of you. And you're able to kind of do the pros and the cons of what works best for you. Um, you know, so how do we review an application? The more the merrier or the bet, you know, the more uh, letters of recommendation and documents that you can give us is always better to balance out those numbers, as I was mentioning before. Um, and how does a student determine fit? It, it comes to a lot of things, it's location. Does that school have your program? Is there internship opportunities? I always like a student to lead towards their program or what they're interested in studying because ultimately that's gonna produce an outcome for a career. You don't wanna focus on you know, some other stuff when picking a college. You ultimately wanna say like, does this school have the program that I wanna do? Um, how or when or can or should a student express interest in a college? At least for me as a Farmingdale counselor, any time is great. You know, we have students that reach out to us as early as freshman year as a high school student. And it's always best to check with Farmingdale or any school and see, did your deadlines change? Did your standards change? Is there anything I should be improving on? Um, so I, I feel like there's never, it's never too early. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. How can an applicant improve their chances of admissions? Uh, like I've mentioned before, giving us everything that you got, being as diverse as possible, but on the other hand, some students feel like they need to do multiple things. It's good to do one or two things really well. So um, it depends on you as a student, but I would, I would just say kind of give us everything. Give us those letters of recommendation. Give us your updated senior grades. Really push it right until the end finish line. 
and contacting an admissions office. We're gonna give you our contact information at the very end, but now in this COVID world, emailing an admissions officer, giving them a call is always the best thing to do. Checking out their virtual appointments, getting in touch with a counselor. So kind of going back, kind of going along with what I was saying about visiting campuses. Right now, some campuses are doing in-person campus tours. Uh, most of them are, are, are offering a virtual option. At least in Farmingdale, we have admissions appointments running daily. We have events that we offer Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. So just like most campuses in the SUNY system, there are still going to be info sessions, tours, individual appointments, or different events. We're going to give you our link at the end, um, but I would definitely you know, start to get registered for open houses and different things coming up this fall or spring. You can still visit campus even in a virtual space. Even for some students, it's easier. You don't need to make those long drives. Um, do you want me to do this, Ryan, really quickly? Sure. Or you, and then you can do the yeah. other ones. Um, so just application options. At Farmingdale, we don't really have some of these. Uh, we're really just kind of an open-end admissions process. We do hold an EOP program, which is Educational Opportunity Program, um, but we don't have special talents. But just for some of the other campuses, um, there is an early decision. So basically you're applying, you're saying yes, you're going to attend that school. Um, there's early action, which is kind of the same process, but it's just getting an early acceptance letter. You're not really committed to that school, whereas early decision, if you're accepted, you are, you know, going essentially. Um, educational opportunity program is generally a student that has a GPA about 10 points below what the school's looking for, depending on the campus. Again, every campus is a little bit different. And depending on the school, we're one of the smallest EOP programs. I think we're the third smallest or something like that. We're very small. Um, and we have about, you know, 30 spots total, whereas there's some schools that have HEOP, EOP, and like a whole other EOP program. So hundreds of students. So with EOP students, if you're interested, especially in EOP, special talents, early decision, all of these students are generally done again by that Thanksgiving deadline, usually in end of October, beginning of November. Take it away, Ryan. All right, so application review. Obviously, a couple of these bullets are going to change and be stressed a little bit more. Um, so we, we look at what you've taken in high school, obviously, off of the transcripts, and don't lose um, don't forget that we also look at senior year grades. So just because you've done well, don't get the senioritis, which some high school students do. Um, we have the ability that if you apply and you're kind of like right on the cusp of being admitted, we could ask for mid-year grades and we'll put your application into a waitlisted status until we see um, your, your second marking quarter grades. So, you know, make sure to, you know, keep an aggressive schedule. Don't over limit yourself, but, you know, keep it to where you please to your strengths because think of it as like a resume for college because that's exactly what it is. Um, with test scores, you know, the SAT and ACTs are gone like Rob and I have uh, stressed, you know, but AP, IB and college courses are still going to remain. So, you know, AP, if you're going to take an AP exam, we will 100% accept it with a grade of three or higher. If it is a math AP, we will accept it with a grade of four or higher. Um, IB, it's all over the place in terms of their grading, but we do accept it for college credit. And then the college courses or the university and high school is what we like to call it. If you have the option or the ability to take a college level class through high school and you feel that you're going to do well in it, there should be no discussion on, on doing it because you're going to get those credits at a severely discounted price, even more so than through SUNY. Um, and they're going to be transferable 99% of the places that you go to. So if you have that option, definitely explore it. It is worth it in the long run, 100%. Um, the personal statement and letters of recommendation. So when you're thinking about this application, okay, do you think that a college admissions office is going to want to see, like, if you're applying to biology, let's say, do you think that they're going to want to see a letter of recommendation from your gym teacher or, you know, somebody that is not related to the field? It's great to have as maybe like your second or third um, letter of recommendation, but remember, it's an application. It's a resume. So if you're applying to a mathematics program or a biology program or a history program, have a letter of recommendation from one of those foundation classes, like a biology teacher or a chemistry teacher. So, you know, personally do it. And then with the personal statement, 
my word of advice to you is get a rough draft going as soon as possible and have everybody that you can possibly have review it with you, whether that's your school counselor, your mom and dad, your guardian, your brother who's currently in college or your sister, um, or you know your English teacher. Have them review it with you because you're never gonna get it perfect the first time, and we take personal statements extremely serious in admissions. We look at grammar. We want to make sure that you're not text writing, okay? Um, that's a big problem now, especially in this technology area, is we get these um, personal statements that are written in shorthand, and there's a lot of grammatical errors. That is not going to benefit you in the college application review. So the decision, right? So when can you expect to hear? I'm going to speak in terms of Farmingdale State, okay? Our applications are live now. We're going to start decisioning the fall, probably late October. So you're going to be able to find out whether or not you got in. Say you applied today and your application was complete within two weeks. You'll probably know by November 1st whether or not you got in. We typically run anywhere between a two to four week window from the point of application to a decision excluding our co more competitive programs like nursing and dental hygiene and applied psychology, et cetera. Um, there is wait list capabilities. So like I was talking about before, if you are a borderline candidate or if you're going for an extremely um, competitive program, you may be waitlisted and that will be communicated with, to you with next, um, you know, next steps. Um, full applicant January admin, which is completely fine. You know, we, like Rob said earlier, we have like a rolling decision basis. So yes, we have, we have deadlines for our stricter programs, but you know, even if we're plan A, B, C, or D, we're part of that plan. So if you decide to apply to us late, you know, for some of our general programs, we're still going to be there come March or April or even May for that matter, just so you're aware. Um, and yes, like I said before, it is provisional, and your senior year does matter. Have there been times where we've conditionally accepted students into a program pending completion of certain courses or doing well, and they don't meet those requirements, and what happens? Th their application and their acceptance is rescinded. Um, it can happen, and it has happened. Um, but to offset that, if you are denied from a program, um, never is, is the wrong word to think. And that goes for every, and I can speak wholeheartedly, that goes for every SUNY school. So if you're applying to an extremely competitive program and you get a denial letter, don't think of that as you can never attain that degree at that said institution. It just means that right now, you're not ready for the program because we never want to set you behind. There are always options. And the best thing you can do if you receive a denial letter is call the admissions office and talk about options. No matter what that letter states, you call that admissions office, you schedule an appointment, and you meet with an admissions counselor because that is our job. That's what we're here for, to help you digest this gigantic thing that is college admissions and get you on the right track, okay? Rob, I'm gonna let you take over. Absolutely. Um, yeah, so a few tips for your application or, and you know, for your application and, what, and the applicant and what you should be looking forward to and what you should do. So don't wait until the last minute. You want to make sure that, like I was mentioning before, you speak to who you want to for your letters of recommendation. You start your personal statement, like Ryan said, so you have a few drafts going. Give yourself enough time because going, back, going down to the last point about do not stress, we don't want this to be a stressful experience for you. And how great would it be to be done in the next coming weeks or you know month and then have the time to apply and just submit everything instead of rushing. And now it's, it's harder than ever for students. And I commend you because you don't have the easy accessibility of just going down to your school counselor every day. Or you, know, you might be on a, a, a dual schedule. I have some students I'm working with that haven't even gone into their their school yet. So they have only talked to their counselors virtually. So I can understand the stress and what you guys are going through, but that's why you should utilize us to ask us any questions and, you know, start this process as early as possible. Finishing high school strong. I know I'm jumping around, but it's just to go through the points. Finishing high school strong, like Ryan said, give us those good senior grades. 
push it to the very last marker because like Ryan said, if you want us to take a second look of your if you want us to take a second look at your application or look at us uh, look at us to see what options we can give you, it only helps you and only shows us that we should have accepted you by you turning around and saying, look how good I'm doing in my senior year. Look at me pushing it. I'm taking these extra classes. I'm taking the APs in the senior year. Do everything you can to the very last minute. Don't think just the end of junior year is the end. You know, senior year is just nothing. Um, be aware of your deadlines. Make sure you know if you're applying for a business program, health program, criminal justice program, when those deadlines are at that school. And, um, oh, I missed the first one. Utilize the campus admission staff for questions. I think we mentioned that before. And then lastly, as Ryan's gonna move on, check your emails, check your college's student portals. One thing I find with a lot of our students, at least check your spam, check everything, just because we come through like our, our emails are edu.edu. So some emails send that to a spam area. Um, so what are we kind of looking for really quickly? Evaluation, what are we looking for? Of course, your academics. We wanna see a good strong schedule, that you're executing it well, and then there's a balance there, that you're doing the extracurricular work that you're interested in that applies to the career field that you want, but also you're taking your core math, science, English, history, all four years, we like to see you push it. Um, and then of course, foreign language for some students, but that's not all required. I just wanna say, you know, but we do kind of give a blanket statement for everybody. Um, sequence, going back to obviously, we'll use math for an example. Are you doing your algebra, your geometry, algebra two, pre-calculus? Are you following that four year sequence? What is your layout going to be? Or the same with the sciences. Um, Subject areas, again, the core four, math, science, English, and history. And then of course, you know, we wanna see all the subject areas being taken, good strong GPA and test scores. Test scores, of course, is, you know, kind of with a star asterisk because we don't know what that's going to look like for this year. Class rank, I'm just gonna glaze over. I can only speak for Farmingdale. I can't speak for every other school, but we do not take class rank into um, account anymore. And I don't know if Ryan wants to talk on that, but it's really a non-existent thing for us. I agree. Um, class rank means nothing to us in terms of Farmingdale. We, Personally, I'm there for me. That's, yeah, that's my we look, we look holistically, you know, at, at an applicant now. Um, I'm going to go over this very, very quickly. You know, activities involvement, we've touched on that. Get your activity sheet together. You know, everything is, is, would be, will be great. You know, with community service, you know, we understand what's going on and how this is going to be severely limited. Um, so don't think that it's going to hold up an application. Higher education, we are, we are conforming and changing just like the high schools are. So, um, you know, yes, we want to see community service, but if anything has been impacted by COVID or the pandemic, it's not going to be held against you. Um, you know, leadership positions, you know, we, we want to see a student that, you know, is, is not only doing great inside the classroom, but also outside of the classroom as well. Maybe clubs and activities, you know, student government, etc. You know, continuous commitment, employment and activities if they're working. These are all great things to put on your activity sheet or your, um, your resume for, you know, college. So this kind of ends the SUNY portion of the... Uh, of the the webinar um what we're going to kind of do really quick um is is a little self-promotion kind of talk a little bit farm about farmingdale state college as a whole um i think we have a little less than 20 minutes left this won't be that long this is only a couple slides just to kind of go over farmingdale state college as a whole and then we can open it up um you know to q a um so with that being said um, I'm going to touch on this slide. I'll let Rob kind of go over the schools a little bit and then we'll follow up. We'll kind of ping pong off each other a little bit. Um, so like we've spoken about before, Farmingdale State College is the largest technology college within the SUNY system. Um, we have breached 10,000 students um, for the second year in a row, and um, we are now sitting comfortably at about 10,100 students. Um, we instituted our fir first master's program about three years ago, um, and we're centrally located. You know, you guys are all in that Levittown area, so we're a stone's throw away, literally 10 to 15 minutes away. 
we take a lot of pride in having a lot of students, but having that small classroom feel. And I know things have changed, but we're keeping our, even our virtual lectures um, to that, that student to faculty ratio and that average classroom size. So typically average classroom size 25 to one, no more than 30 ever in a class. And that goes even in the virtual world where we could even have the opportunity to kind of bulk things up. We don't want to do that because we like the personal feel, you know, to the types of uh, classes and uh, offerings that we have. Okay, so uh, we're quickly going to go through our schools. Um, as I mentioned before, in the chat, let us know if there's something specific that you're interested in, because it's better just to let us know, like Ryan just showed you, if we have 44 undergraduate programs total and it would take all day to get through them. This is our School of Arts and Sciences, where we hold our criminal justice programs, our bioscience programs. Uh, we do have some of our art programs that are professional communications, and this is where you also see liberal arts and sciences. Next is our School of Business. Uh, you'll see following is our School of Engineering. This is actually in our School of Business, the largest number of students we have on campus. Uh, we have our newer programs in the business analytics space and computer science, which we're very excited for. Uh, this is also where we hold our horticulture program, which is popular with some students. And then we also do have landscape development, our visual communications program, which is an art major and interaction design, which is new with us as well. So next, like I mentioned before, our largest school, which is our School of Engineering Technology. Most of these programs, if not all, are ABAT accredited, which we're very proud of. Our current chair, uh, Barbara Christie, she is a current uh, board member of ABAT accreditation. She's phenomenal, well knowledge, and she's great to work with. Um, so she's a good resource for anybody that's interested in the engineering technology space. This is where we hold our professional pilot program, which is very popular. We also have a transfer option for our students interested in the third and the fourth year automotive technology program. And this is also where we have our technology management masters. And then last but not least is our School of Health Sciences where we see a large amount of our questions from the nursing program and our dental hygiene program. But quickly you can see we have our six programs um, are most popular and one of our newest programs, especially with everything going on is our applied gerontology program, working with the elderly, um, so, you know, that is definitely something to jump on for our fall uh, semester. As with most um, institutions of higher education, um, when you're paying, you know, a lot of tuition, you get a lot of support services. So, you know, you're going to get this um, pretty much blanketed throughout SUNY, whether it's, you know, academic advisement, which is done not only departmentally by Farmingdale State, but also we have our own academic advisement center. So if the departments are overwhelmed or busy at the current moment, we will have academic advisors on staff to help you, um, you know, fine tune your schedule. Um, you know, disability services, um, tutoring for every single major on campus. Um, we have veteran affairs. If you're thinking about going into the military prior to um, coming to Farmingdale, we are what we call a yellow ribbon institution, meaning that if you are um, honorably discharged from the military, you have the option of going to higher education for free um, through the yellow ribbon program. Um, study abroad. I know we started off with a SUNY study abroad program to kind of reel it in. You have 64 college campuses. Every single one of them has a study abroad program. The best part about SUNY, and that's, this goes back to that being connected thing, say Farmingdale is going to um, Ireland, and you don't want to go to Ireland, but SUNY New Pulse is going to New Zealand. Um, you are able to hop on to New Pulse's study abroad program, go to New Zealand, study for the semester, and come back to Farmingdale with all of those credits as well. So it's kind of, you have 63 other options to study abroad. So, it, you know, the options are endless. The Nexus Center for Applied Learning and Career, um, this is the purpose of going to college. I, I know I, I'm beating a dead horse when I say it, but we want you to get a job when you graduate. And over 85% of our graduates are working full time within six months of graduating. Um, they're also, about 75% of that population is working in a field dedicated to their major, meaning they are walking out with their degree and they're getting a job within six months. And that, that a lot goes to our career services and applied learning center because they will help you fine tune your resume, get letters of recommendation from your professors and or um, previous employers, and as well as getting internships uh, opportunities throughout your college uh, career. 
You want to jump on student life, Rob? Yeah, absolutely. So student life on campus, uh, funny enough that everything you see here, which would happen normally on a day-to-day -day campus experience, we are doing it virtually. So we have our campus grief life up and running with our sororities and our fraternities on the right-hand side. You can look through uh, that they're, they're currently doing a virtual rush program and all the philanthropy that they would normally do in the virtual space. Uh, we did have a large esports community here at Farmingdale with our computer programming and a lot of our computer science majors. We did have a large esports team and that's currently up and running because you don't really need to be in person uh, for that. Uh, we have our campus recreations programs, clubs and organizations. There are a few things that have been affected as Ryan moves through the athletic slide on the next page. Some of our athletics programs, some of our campus recreations programs have been affected due to COVID or club sports. Um, but if you are interested, the best thing to do is reach out to the coach, get on their radar, or reach out to clubs and organizations, get involved because you know we're only trying to look for the future this spring, the following fall. Uh, so you really just want to at least get involved or in the mix for that. Uh, with athletics, um, you know, Ryan, stay on tuition though. With athletics, the one thing I would say is that um, go to the website, go to the athletics page. There is a student interest form. If you're interested in athletics, fill it out and a coach will contact you. Worst case scenario, always come back and circle back to us and bother us with any questions. You want to do tuition and fees, Ryan? Sure. Since you did it last yeah, time? so, you know, we spoke about SUNY tuition and you can see that it's pretty much the same throughout New York State. Um, whereas the average tuition for the four-year institution about 8710, I think that's where we were at. We're at 8538. So you, you know that is the small little difference that you'll see in between the campuses. But it, really, when you're talking about education and $200 difference, it's all the same. Um, so you know our room and board is there. We are actually rooming. Uh, we have um, the ability to dorm upwards of uh, 625 students. Um, because of the pandemic, we, are only, we only have 150 resident hall students. So um, every, every um, basically room has one student to it. Um, there are certain restrictions that have to be made um, in order to be a resident student at Farmingdale, but just know we are well over 97% commuter based. 10,100 students, only 600 typically Res reside with us and now only 150 so we're like 98% you know commuter based so you know this brings us to the end um, of our of our presentation um, this is uh, Rob and myself's information um, you know the, I want to just bring you to the last slide really quick and then we can always come back if you guys want to take I'll, I'll leave this up here for like 15 seconds if you want to take a quick picture with your cell phone to get ours um, I'm gonna speak for Rob in this case because I can um, we love to be bugged so you know, this is what we're here for. You know, um, email is the best way to get a hold of us in this virtual world. But any questions that aren't answered tonight, if you remember something 10 minutes down the road, email us. You know, we will gladly help you out, even if it's not even directed at Farmingdale, just in general. Um, we've both been doing this for quite some time, and we're, we we're very well versed with, you know, admissions, not only with Farmingdale, but SUNY as well. The last slide, um, which is basically our events at Farmingdale. Um, so to kind of just touch on it before we go into a Q&A, um, we are doing a lot of things virtually right now, including our open house. Um, you'll see a QR code on the right hand side. If you actually um, hold your phone camera up to it, um, it should link you directly to the registration page for our open house, which will be on November 8th from 11 to 2. Um, you will take a virtual tour. Uh, you can speak individually with academic departments. You can go over admissions criteria with us. Financial aid webinars will be had. Um, and you can kind of chat not only with faculty, but students as well. There's going to be a Google, uh, I believe it's going to be like a hangout area for uh, lots of our clubs and activities where you can interact with our club members and, um, you know, students to kind of get a feel for what, what they're kind of going through right now, not only but being a Farmingdale student, but during the pandemic as well. I know the, um, the link is quite long as well, so you may want to take a picture of the link for the virtual events. Um, we are holding one-on-one -on -one appointments five days a week. We are doing this phone-based as of right now, but probably starting October 1st, you will have the option of either doing a phone appointment or a video chat with us. 
Um, we are also holding virtual on-site admissions. So if you're a senior right now or a transfer student, um, we have select dates coming up in October and November where you can schedule an appointment with us. We will review your transcripts with you on the spot and tell you whether or not you'll get into the institution. Uh, we hold weekly nursing and dental hygiene information sessions, we, weekly admissions and transfer services informations, and you can always do an online campus visit as well. So what I will do there is I'll go back to our information page and I will open it up for questions. The thing that I guess we could stress is just, you know, be aggressive. You know, if, if you have questions, ask the specific departments. You're not gonna, I hope you don't have any bad experiences with any admissions office because if you have one with me, it's gonna come to me anyway and I'll make sure it's taken care of. But just, you know, it just reach out. Um, we're really friendly um, and just questions, 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 because they're gonna come up. Um, there's a lot, it's a, and everything is new, not only for you guys, but for us as well. So we can kind of go through the growing pains together. All right. Awesome. Well, thank you so, so much. And I hope everyone has a wonderful night. And uh, yes, enjoy. <laughs> Take care, everybody. Thank you so much. Have a great night.